welcome back. This video is going to explain how duct detectors work. If you look on the left here, I drew a fan and that's supposed to simulate whatever kind of HVAC equipment, whether it's an air conditioner, a furnace, whatever. And maybe it's located on the on a roof, maybe it's a furnace in a, in a basement or a boiler room or whatever, but it's going to be connected to ductwork and then the ductwork is going to take that treated air, whether it's hot or cold right now, and it's going to have vents along the way, right? And those are going to be in offices or classrooms or wherever to treat the air. And what a duct detector is, is it's a smoke detector that monitors the air inside that ductwork, hence the name duct detector. So I drew this little green rectangle here with some things sticking out of it, um, and that's representing my duct detector right now. So let's, let's look a little bit more at that. If you look at this thing with the, the red tip down there, that is what's called a sampling tube. And I drew a little bit bigger one to make it a little bit easier to see. So this sampling tube is basically a pipe, like a piece of conduit with holes in it. Those holes are going to be facing the direction of the, the source, the airflow basically. So if the, if, the, if the airflow from this fan, oops, I'm in the wrong tool, is, is going this way, well then the holes are gonna be facing that way. And what happens is that sampling tube collects the air and there's always a plug at the end and that's kind of important. You have to plug the end of this tube because we want to force the air to go through our smoke detector. So what happens is the air will go into this tube since it's plugged on the end it's going to be forced to go through this little smoke detector that's a little white circle internally and then out a return. So it, it takes, takes a little bit of this air flows it through the smoke detector and then back into the ductwork. So I drew the smoke detector a little bit uh, in more detail so that would be easier to see. So the little blue thing here, imagine that's that's enlarged, you know, over here, the thing I just brought into the picture. So the, the little gray circle on the left here would be the sampling tube, and the one on the right would be the return. And usually there's plastic casing, well, there's always plastic casing around these, which will direct the airflow. So these little lines are basically the form of the plastic cover that goes on this duct detector. So the air is going to come in, to, you know, through the sampling tube. It's going to be forced through this smoke detector and it'll go right back out the return and into the duct. So anywhere that comes through, it, it passes through that smoke detector. I think that's an easy enough, an easy enough concept. And then this, this picture is just basically a duct detector on duct work so this gray stuff is a duct work and this is the duct detector and then usually on the right there's going to be a circuit board some of the newer ones now you can mount these so that this is actually below it um, they can actually even be separated now you know one could be in one area and one could be in the other um, but there'll be some wires going from the smoke detector to the circuit board and, and so forth so that you know it detects it, when it goes into smoke it tells the circuit board it's an alarm and that's how it interfaces with the panel and the next um, frame, I guess you could say down here, imagine this green thing is the circuit board. And when you saw an actual circuit board, there'd just be a ton of terminals that you could hook a bunch of different stuff up to. And it can be a little intimidating. Um, this is going to be the drawing of a conventional duct detector. Addressable ones are much simpler. You just hook data up to them and then they'd use an intelligent smoke head and it makes the process a lot easier. But let's look at a conventional one right now. And a conventional duct detector, it's going to need power first First of all. Hopefully you've already watched the video on four-wire smoke detectors. Um, this is a little bit like that. Almost all duct detectors can be powered off of either 24 volts from the panel. Um, it could be 24 volts AC, could be 24 volts DC, or could most of them can even be powered off of 120 volts, or in some cases even 220. But let's assume that we're powering this off of our panel. So we'd use resettable power, right? Which means that when we hit the reset button on the panel, the power would drop out. So the first thing we're going to do is wire up power to this duct detector. And again, this is the circuit board on the left of the duct detector. Imagine all the smoke sensing equipment would be on the left over here. So the smoke detector is going to get, or the duct detector is going to get positive and negative. And now it has power. And I want you to look next at this supervisory contact. What this is, is basically like a trouble relay. When we talked about conventional panels, I showed an onboard trouble relay on the fire alarm panel. And this is very similar to that, except 
This is called a form A relay because it only has two contacts. It has common and normally open. You'll see there's no normally closed right here. So what happens is when this thing gets power and assuming that everything else was properly connected, um, usually if you were to take the cover off of a duct detector, it would, it would cause a trouble on this, on this as well because obviously it's not going to work correctly. As we talked about before in the previous slides, these, the, the form of this um, cover is what directs the airflow. So if you were to remove the cover, the air would just shoot out the hole and it would, the smoke detector would be useless. So usually if you take that off, it's going to put the duct detector in trouble and so on. So assuming that the cover's on, there's no other trouble with the, um, with the duct detector. Now that this duct detector has power, this is going to close. And it's a little confusing because it's the way I labeled this is normally open, right? But it's normally open. It's kind of a fail-safe relay. So if it were, it's normally open when it's sh taken out of the box. You take this thing out of the box, and those two contacts are going to be open. When it's not in trouble, now this closes. And so that's important because now we're going to wire it up to the to the fire alarm panel. So then you know when the duct detector needs when it goes into alarm, it's going to have to alert the panel, right? So the way we wire this thing up is we come out of our zone on the panel and we'll go to common. We'll take negative to normally open. And if we put a resistor right here, then the panel would be clear, right? And when the duct detector went into alarm, this relay would change states, which would short out and cause an alarm on the panel. But we also need to know when it goes into trouble. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a jumper wire we're going we're gonna to series through these supervisory contacts, just like we did on the power supervision relay for the four-wire smoke detector video. Um, this duct detector basically has an onboard power supervision relay, but it's not just a power supervision relay because it would go into trouble for other conditions in, as well. But if you think of it that way, it's going to be wired basically the same. So we can come right out of this normally open and go to normally open on the supervisory contacts, which right now is closed because nothing's in trouble, right? It has power. And then we'll take our resistor on the other side. And here, let's draw the resistor symbol and just go to common. So if you were to follow that path now, follow the current, it can't go any from this normally open. It's just going to go through this trouble contact, through the resistor, back to the panel. So the panel sees a resistor and it's happy. If it were to go into trouble, this would open up. The panel wouldn't see the resistor anymore and it would go into trouble. If the alarm were to short, this would change states and cause the alarm. The current would flow right through this alarm relay and back. The current would increase and it would put the panel into alarm. Um, so that's, it can be confusing for some guys because if you were to take, if you were to walk up to a duct detector and take the cover off and look at the circuit board, there'd be a lot more going on than what I just drew. There'd be more than just four wires there. They make what's called remote test stations, which are little key switches that basically would have an LED on it so it would light up when it went into alarm. And usually you can test it. You can just turn the key, put it in test, and then turn it the other way to reset it, to reset the detector. And those take, you know, four or five wires depending on the model. Um, so there's a bunch of wires there. I'm not really going to get into that because it's pretty self-explanatory and once you're at that level, you know, hopefully you'd be able to just look at the cut sheet and it would make perfect sense. This is the basics that you need to understand is how this part works. And now usually there's a couple onboard relays on the duct detector as well. And they can be used for anything, but they're typically used for fan shutdown. So we're going to, we're going to wire that up too. I drew this ahead of time. This is a fan and this is a power supply. Sorry, my phone's beeping. So So now we have this other alarm relay, which this is also going to change states once the duct detector goes into alarm, but it's completely isolated from the other one, so we could use it for whatever we want. So, you know, this fan's going to need power to run. If I were to draw positive and negative right to the fan, let's draw the negative, we draw the positive, well, the fan's going to start spinning, right? Well, if we want our fans to shut down when this thing goes into alarm, it's very simple. It's just like we did in our previous exam, uh, in our, one of our previous videos. We can go to common and then out of normally closed so that in a normal state, this circuit's complete, right? It's going through normally closed to the fan. The fan's always going to be running. And as soon as this duct detector goes into alarm, this switch is going to open up. It's going to change states, I should say, so that normally closed will open up. It's going to drop power to the fan and the fan's going to shut down.
So that would be, you know, two more. So you, if you open up the duct detector, you'd only see these two wires for fan shutdown because it's just the, um, basically the line and the load for the, you know, the switch leg for the fan. The neutral would never even go into the duct detector. It just goes directly to the fan. So I think that's easy enough. Um, if this was confusing, I'd encourage you to watch it again. Um, and as usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them and I will respond to them. See you in the next video.